All right, Jackie, we're coming up to the 16th hole here at our golf course. Nice birdie there on 15. Thank you. You're up. Hi, I'm Roger Teal, golf operation manager and head golf professional here at Laguna Woods. Today, Jackie and I, one of our assistants, we're going to cover golf etiquette. Show you uh, how to fix a ball mark, uh, pace of play, etc. So hang with us. We're going to go out and have a lot of fun, and we're going to show you a lot about golf etiquette. By the way, good shot, Jackie. Oh, thank you. Oh, nice shot. Okay, here we go. Hey, don't forget, you oh. left your tee. Broken oh. tee over there. Broken tees. Yes, we always try to pick up our broken tees here to help out Sean and his crew and save the lawnmowers. So if we have a receptacle, please put your broken tee in the receptacle. If not, stick it in your pocket and throw it in the trash can as you go down the course. Okay, Jackie, good shot. Let's okay. go on up and find them. I think I outdrove you again. You think you outdrove me, yeah, on this long par five, huh? <laughs> okay, yeah. here we go. All right, let's I go find them. Okay. Hey, what are you doing? Oh. You're back on the fair. How back come? On the How come? Path. How come? 90 degree rule. Oh, right? that's right. I forgot about our 90 degree rule here. We got to keep the keep the fairways nice. You know? Okay, yeah. Here we try to uh, keep our fairways nice by doing the 90 degree rule. 90 degree rule means we keep the cart on the path, correct? Yep. Until we get to our shot and then we turn right or left, depending on the fairway, to go to directly to our golf ball. So let's go and here they are. Let's oh. go out and get them. Okay, good Looks shot. Looks like you maybe got me just by a hair this time. I'll tell you what, I'm going to pull up here. Okay. I'm going to drop you off and I'm going to go up to my ball and we're gonna, I'll be ready to hit. So that'll be good pace of play, ready golf, okay? All right. All right, now as uh, Jackie's getting ready to hit her shot, I'm going to come up to my shot. And uh, that way there won't be any dead time. And I'm getting ready to hit mine. Okay, good shot, Jackie. All right, now I'm getting ready to hit my shot. And boom, I'm going to hit it within a, just a few seconds of her hitting hers. And now we're ready to go. She's coming up to pick me up. Nice shot. Thanks, you too. All right, we're having a good time today. Oh, look at over here. We got a situation, somebody's ball, they probably just came up behind us because we're playing ready golf and so are they. It just came up behind us, it didn't bother us or anything like that, but it's in ground under repair. Tell you what, why don't we show the people how to take relief in ground under repair. Right. Okay, the first thing is I can play the ball as it lies when it's in this white circle, okay? But if I don't want to play it because I'm kind of standing over here in some mud, yeah. I decide to take relief. The first thing I got to do is find the nearest point. I take the club that I'm going to use and I measure. That's my nearest point. Okay. Your feet's outside of the line. Right. And then the other side, no near the hole, is right there. Now what we have to do is measure which one's closer. That's pretty close, isn't it? That's it's pretty a, even. That's actually. pretty even. We can take a driver, kind of measure. Okay, that's about a driver and six inches. Driver and about four inches. This is my nearest point. Okay. If I want relief, I must come over here. Now I get a club length, okay, to mark. Okay, I drop the ball, no near the hole, <coughs> and a club length. And this is where I'm going to drop my ball. Okay. You sure now, you didn't get closer to the hole now? I'm not closer to the I'm hole. I'm looking. Okay. Now I take the drop, shoulder high, drop the ball. In between those two It didn't teams. roll more than two club lengths, so it's in play. It didn't go near the hole. So now, I've got a little different kind of shot. I can change clubs if I want to, to hit the shot. That's how to uh, take relief from ground under repair. Okay. Perfect. Basically the same thing on a cart path. A cart path will be very similar to that. Right there, ooh, somebody's behind the bush. Oh, and, that's you. Oh no, somebody's oh, in a divot. no. Okay, we're gonna park right here. Yeah. This is a great place to park the cart. It's close by, but it's not too far away. It's, well. not, it's not in the way. That doesn't help the fact that my ball's sitting in a divot. Yeah, I'd rather... No, that's mine in the divot, Jackie. Is that yours? That's mine. Oh, you, yeah. You're probably, you're probably going to get relief from the stake tree. Okay, folks. Here we are covering more golf etiquette. Someone had very poor judgment and didn't sand like this and like this. They didn't sand the divot and my ball has rolled into this crater. This is a very, very difficult shot. Look at here. Here's the divot they took out, and it has roots, okay? They could have replaced. Now, what I'm going to do is show you right now how to do this. I'm just going to place my ball over here. They could have replaced this right here like this, stomped it down right away, and then you fill, 
fill the divot in with sand, okay? Now that's, that's kind of proper, go proper golf etiquette, okay? Uh, someone did this one correctly, but this one was very poor. Now if my ball had written, kind of stopped right there where it was a while ago, I have a fair chance of hitting that golf ball. But out of that crater, it was terrible. Now let me show you how, how and when to fix a divot. If I took a divot like that, okay, now there's no roots, nothing to fix. I looked out there, there's no roots. So after I hit my shot, I would take the sand, pour it in, kind of use my shoe, level it out. And after about a week, our grass, this Kikuya grass, grows back in and weaves itself right over that and fills that in. So please fix your, your divots out in the fairway. If you do not have sand with you and you have a hole, just kind of use your club and kick it back in like that. Use your shoe. Now see, that looks pretty good. That's how to fix a divot. And now we're gonna talk about another rule. Well, Jackie's ball is close to this tree and it's staked. Can you see the stake right in here? Any tree that's staked in the rules of golf, you may take stance and swing relief. Now you may or may not get relief of line of sight. So let's see what happens with Jackie. Jackie, keep swinging until you can't hit the tree. She's using the club she's intending to use on the shot. Okay, that's it. Now put your club back now like we did a while ago. That's your nearest point of relief, right there. Okay, don't move your ball yet. Now you get a club length in any direction. Well, and if I think gonna, I wanna go this way. Yeah, if you use your driver, you're gonna be out here, right? Mm -hmm. So you'd put a tee in the ground out here, correct? Uh-huh. With your driver. Now you get to drop out here. Look, you got a nice shot. Yeah. You lucky person, I had to hit out of a divot. Yeah. Okay, so that's the proper way. Go ahead and show them how to take the drop again. Oh, that ball went forward. You got to redrop. Okay, now that ball's in play. Okay. If it had rolled back forward the second time, you would have placed it where it hit the ground the second time. Oh, okay. Just right. twice. You only just get twice. two times. That's all. Okay. That's it. Just twice. Now, some people think that you would have to go directly back and keep this bush in line, but as you can see, the rules of golf are there to help you at times. Okay? They're not there always to penalize you. Sometimes they help you. Okay? Sometimes the golf course give it, sometimes it take it away. Yeah. Okay, Jackie, I think maybe we're either in the bunker or just short of the bunker. Uh, you see any balls around over wow. here? Whoop, there's a cart sign. Oh. We gotta stop and we've gotta move the cart over here over to the next tee area when we see these signs. Mm -hmm. And this protects the area around the greens because this is, you know, delicate shots for everybody. Uh, I don't see our balls. I bet you we're in the bunker. Jackie, why don't oh, you walk you. up? You see them? See you walk them. up there and I'll go park the cart where it belongs over here on the cart path by the next tee. Okay, Jackie, now we're gonna talk about etiquette in the bunkers. Look at, look at these shots. Your ball, again, is in a good spot. My ball, again, is in a bad spot. I prayed to the old golf cart okay. this morning. But look at the poor etiquette. The, the only place there's footprints is right where my ball went. <laughs> what, what, good luck, huh? Now, I've gotta come in, and I don't get to take that ball out of that hole. I've gotta play it, okay? And this is really, really tough. This is worse than what we call a fried egg in a, egg in a bunker. So I've gotta come in here, and I've gotta hit this ball Got to come down through all that sand and try to throw that sand up to the hole and hope I get it out. I, I cannot take free relief just because there's a footprint. It's just poor golf etiquette of the people in front of us. Yeah. Okay, and the reason why we rake it is so everybody has a nice shot in the hazard. I mean, there's enough penalty in here just being in the sand. Yeah. But you have a decent lie, okay? And I've got to hit this ball out. So I'm going to give it a shot and let's see what happens. Okay, Ooh. I got it out. Good out. Okay. That was a tough shot. As we say in golf, any out's a good out. Yep. Okay, so now I'm not gonna interrupt your play. I'm gonna rake this after you play. Okay. So I don't bother you. So I'm gonna come out of the bunker, or some people call them sand traps. Jackie's allowed to move the rake. She just can't rake the bunker before she plays her shot. Now I'm gonna be quiet just for a second while she hits her shot for courtesy. Oh, good shot. Right next to the pen. Okay, now, you're, you're in there, you might as well rake it. Yeah, I'll rake it. Seeing as though you had the good shot and I didn't. Yeah. Okay, she's raking the sand towards her, covering up her footprints, trying to smooth it out the best she can. 
Now, if there was some other footprints in there, the courtesy on Jackie's part would go ahead and rake somebody else's mistake that didn't have courtesy. Okay, that's your basic etiquette. And we leave our rakes in the bunkers here at Laguna Woods. Uh, USGA does not have a rule one way or the other, but it helps the maintenance crew. They don't have to stop when they're mowing and throw them in. And plus, nobody's gonna run over them with a golf cart. Of course, nobody should be this close with a golf cart. However, maybe a maintenance guy would run over it and break the handle and get splintered. So we leave them in the bunker. Especially out in the fairway bunkers, if they're out there, you yes. can get ran over out there. Good point. Okay, Jackie, looks like a couple ball marks up here. I don't know who's, who's is whose. I don't think my little pitch shot made that big ball mark. You know, remember, I, I missed the green, I had to chip up. Yeah. But somebody's left a ball mark, and it looks like yours is, you, you got some backspin there. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, you know, we got a sign here on the uh, flags that says, please fix your ball marks. A little reminder for everybody. Here's the proper way to fix a ball mark. You use a divot tool, and you kind of come in from the side and slightly lift. Okay, and you take that big hump and you kind of push it to the center. Okay? okay, just gently getting into the turf because what you don't want to do, and I'll show you in a second how to do it the wrong way, you don't want to tear that turf. Now you can step on it with your foot, or let me have your putter, or you can tap it down with your putter. That's in the rules of golf. Okay, now that looks pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. Now we fixed that within five minutes of the time it got done. If we waited 45 minutes to fix a ball mark, the turf is dying already. Oh, wow, that soon. That soon, it dies within 45 minutes. And then if it's not fixed, it takes a week to repair. After we came, after we come and fix it, as we were doing, it would take a week to repair. That's why you see all these little brown dots. Yeah, we do have a lot of those here. Yes, we do. All right, now I'm gonna show you the incorrect way. Okay. Somebody comes up with a T or a ball marker, it doesn't matter, and they try to lift the turf. Now look what happened. Oh. I tore the root. Oh, so it'll automatically die then? It's going to die. No matter what? No matter how yeah. pretty you now, make it? I, I can try to repair it, but I don't think it's going gonna, it's gonna to help. So in a week's time, we're going to find a little brown spot right there. Let me make a little ball mark, and you come in and try to fix it. Here we go. little ball mark. Okay. So I'm going to want to go in. Pull it in. Yeah. And Pull then... in and use your foot, and then maybe use your putter. Now, that's pretty smooth. You can put right over that. Okay, Jackie, there's your sand shot, and here's my little chip shot, so you're away. Nice chip, by the way. Yeah, pretty good, huh? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to be taking the flag out because in the rules of golf, when you're putting on a putting green, the flag stick has to be out of the, of the, flag, out of the hole, or it's a two-stroke penalty if you strike it. And we're going to put our sand wedges right here on the flag so we don't forget them. Yeah, Roger. Lord knows that a lot of people lose their golf clubs around Yeah, we got here, a big so. loss and found, don't we, in a yeah, golf shop. So. Okay, so now I'm going to mark my ball here right behind the, the proper rule of golf is I mark it with a round disc. It's either, it can be one of the plastic ball marks that stick in the ground or a small coin right behind the ball. Jackie's going to do the same. Now, I'm going to... Do I need to move that, Jackie? Yeah, you do. Why would I want to move it? Because I think my ball might have to go right over your ball mark and I don't want it to deflect okay. my putt. So, uh, could you span it to the left for me, please? Oh, this, what this are you is... doing? Your foot's right in my line. Oh, look, I made a big old footprint. I'm Didn't sorry. Didn't they teach you anything in PGA school? Oh, bad golf <laughs> etiquette, isn't it? <laughs> now you got to put through my footprint. That's not too good, is it? So good. now I need to stand back here and line up with maybe a tree across the way over there and move the marker like this. Is that enough? Yeah, that, that should be fine. Okay, then you're going to play. Does my shadow bother you? Uh, no. So you now, you're going to bother me right there if you could stand and okay. behind just so a little bit. So I need to move bit. out of the way a little bit. I don't That's want That's proper your... etiquette, just to give the person a, an easy chance, no interference. Now I kept my mouth quiet real quick oh. while she putted. She happened to miss. Now are you going to finish? Yes, may okay. I? Yeah, you can finish. Once you start putting, you're allowed to finish if you're not standing in someone's line. And now what I'll do, I'll come back up put my putter just back like it was, move my mark over, and then I line up my putt, pick up my marker, and putt. Ha. Nice putt. Up and down, that's pretty good out of the sand. Okay, now we'll remember to get our clubs, put the flag stick back in. 
I think I'll do our scoring right here, okay? No, wait till there's people out there in the fairway wanting oh. to get up. We oh, yeah. Get That's pace of play, isn't it? Yeah. We wouldn't do our score here. We'd go to our golf cart. Next and, hole. Next hole, okay. Turn that thing off. Oh, my cell phone went off. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that terrible etiquette? I'm sure glad I wasn't right in the middle of putting. Oh, I'm sorry. Right in the I'll, of I'll my turn scrub. it off. Okay. Oh, Hold on. It should have been off from from the get go. And here we are on the 17th hole. And it's the first time it went off. Well. But you know, as the golf manager, I should have my cell phone with me. <laughs> well, put put it on vibrate so oh, I can okay. hear it. All right, I can put it on vibrate. Okay. okay. Now, hey Jackie, before you putt, let's talk about if we should wave up or not. Okay. Okay. Now, the best situation of waving up is when a group is on the tee waiting and on the next tee there's a group wait, waiting there also so that's a perfect time for us to pick up our balls we mark our balls and we stand at the back of the green and wave the group up to play okay because we don't have anywhere to go either because they're standing there waiting at the tee now if we're on this par three and there's a group waiting but nobody on the tee over here we should play out just to keep to, up the pace. To keep up the pace. Okay. Okay. So is that clear? I mean, yeah. you understand that? Oh, yeah. Now, that twosome down there waving at us? Yeah. They're kind of frantic. They want us to play. And uh, there's, there's nobody there. So let's, let's let them wave up, you know, and then we'll catch up. Okay? Okay. Because that's the 18th hole. So they're a little frantic. Let's let them play. All right. Okay. Well, here, let's so say. now we'll mark our balls and we'll get out of the way. Folks, I think we're going to go on to our next session. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call myself, Brad, or Jackie to get a private lesson. Thank you very much. The Recreation Division offers a comprehensive program of classes, lessons, and special dining and entertainment events throughout the year. Six of the seven clubhouses offers a variety of dining rooms available to rent for a fee and have friendly staff to help you plan your special birthday party or other event. There are five swimming pools, 36 holes of golf, 10 tennis courts, four paddle tennis courts, two garden centers, an equestrian center, and many other facilities available for your enjoyment. There are also over 200 resident clubs and organizations available for you to join. The Recreation Division office is located on the first floor of the Community Center building. There you will find the Clubhouse Reservations Coordinator who will assist you in reserving a room and providing other pertinent information for your special event. You will also find a variety of printed materials regarding recreation facilities and activities. The Community Center offers recreational facilities on the first and third floors. Several meeting rooms are available on the first floor as well as the Community Fitness Center, Table Tennis Room, and Computer Learning Center on the third floor. Clubhouse One offers a variety of facilities. There's a main lounge that seats up to 220 for dining and has a fully equipped commercial kitchen. Other facilities include a large patio area with gazebo and smaller dining and meeting rooms. The drop-in lounge offers coffee for everyone in a relaxing environment. Drop in to watch television, work on a puzzle, or read a magazine while waiting for a bus. Clubhouse One also features a drop-in card room, indoor shuffleboard facility, three bocce courts, and a billiard room with six tables available for play. The Clubhouse One Fitness Center offers over 10,000 square feet of space dedicated to exercise. The facility provides the community with a fully equipped exercise room and staff that supervise individual exercise programs. The gymnasium offers a comprehensive program of group exercise programs, dance classes, basketball, volleyball, and badminton. The Emeritus Institute at Saddleback College is a contributing partner in the Fitness Center program. 
Pool One offers locker rooms and showers for your convenience and certified lifeguards for your safety. The large pool is 25 yards long and is heated year round. There is also a hot pool to help you unwind and relax. The Laguna Woods Village Library is a separate building located across the parking lot from Clubhouse One. The total book, magazine, and paperback circulation exceeds 140,000 annually. There's also books on tape, research material, puzzles, periodicals, CDs, and videos available for your enjoyment. Clubhouse 2 is located inside gate 12 adjacent to the 27-hole golf course. The main lounge with seating for up to 300 for dining has two fireplaces and is also equipped with a large commercial kitchen. In addition, there are three smaller dining or meeting rooms each with a complete kitchen. There are two lawn bowling greens, six outdoor shuffleboard courts, two card rooms, and a video learning center. Pool 2 has one of the best views in the area and provides lane lines for lap swimming during the morning hours. There are also certified lifeguards, locker rooms with showers, and a large hot pool. Pool 2 is available for a guest fee for children ages 4 through 15 during designated hours. Clubhouse 3 features an 834 seat auditorium with a rehearsal room and two dressing rooms. A wide variety of performers and club activities are featured weekly. Tickets for these events may be purchased at the box office. Two large dining rooms with fully equipped kitchens are also located at Clubhouse 3. Clubhouse 4 is the Arts and Crafts Center of Laguna Woods Village and fills the needs of hobbyists from beginner to advanced. Facilities range from a photo classroom with a dark room and digital capabilities to slip casting, sewing, wood shop, art studio, ceramics, lapidary, and jewelry. Pool 4 offers ramp access into both the large pool and hot pool. Pool 4 is the warmest pool and has extended evening hours during the summer months. Clubhouse 5 features the largest main lounge in the community with a seating capacity of 400 for dining. There's a permanent stage, commercial kitchen, and a large bar area that adjoin this room. Other Clubhouse 5 facilities include a 12-table game room, a billiard room with six tables, and two multi-purpose rooms. Pool 5 is approximately 25 yards long with a maximum depth of 5 feet. Lane lines are installed during designated hours. Water exercise classes are held year round and there are certified lifeguards on duty for your safety. The hot pool also includes an access ramp. Clubhouse 6's main lounge is the ideal setting for that special private party. This facility features a fully equipped kitchen, dance floor, and large outdoor patio. The foyer is open and includes a bar and lounge area with comfortable seating. There is also a television area and billiard room with three tables. Pool 6 is open during the summer months and provides a tranquil setting with a certified lifeguard for safety and locker rooms and showers for your convenience. Clubhouse 7 is the newest addition to the community facilities. The main room accommodates approximately 130 for dining. There's a dance floor, stage, large patio area and commercial kitchen. On the other side of the clubhouse is the bridge room with approximately 60 tables. Times for bridge games are published weekly in the newspaper. There is also a driving range office, small pro shop, and locker rooms available at the facility. The community has a 27-hole golf course and 9-hole par 3 executive course. The pro shop carries top brand golf merchandise at affordable prices, and the snack bar serves up the best hot dogs in town. A driving range and practice area include putting greens, and a bunker and chipping area. Club and electric cart rentals are also available. You may schedule golf lessons with one of our golf professionals. There are 10 tennis courts inside Gate 12 West adjacent to the driving range. There are ball machine clinics, tennis lessons, and coin-operated lights for evening play offered at the facility. There are also four paddle tennis courts located inside Gate 12 East adjacent to the 27-hole golf course. Two garden centers offer a place for residents to hone their horticulture skills and work on their own gardens. The annual charge depends on the size of the garden plot. Please check with a garden center coordinator for plot availability. 
The Equestrian Center provides residents with a unique facility and a variety of activities including guided trail rides, riding lessons, and horseshoe pits. Special events include horsemanship camps, horse shows, and cookouts are scheduled throughout the year. There are 10 community-owned horses and boarding facilities are available for resident-owned horses. Contact the Equestrian Center for current fees and to make reservations. Remember, don't hesitate to ask our friendly and professional staff for help at any of the facilities. We are here to make your recreation experience enjoyable and worthwhile. For more recreation information, please drop by the Recreation Division office or check our website at www.lagunawoodsvillage.com.